voorzitter, achtbare voorzitter, het is opvallend dat die president ons wereldkampioen Driekes Duplessis geïgnoreer het tijdens zijn toespraak. Meneer die president, Driekes blij is Zuid-Afrikaner, zelfs al ondersteun hij niet die corrupte ANC nie en hij verdient erkenning voor zijn helde daden. Maar gelukkig gaan kiezers binnenkort aan die ANC doen wat Driekes aan Sean Strickland gedoen het, want die ANC weet niet wat ons weet nie. As I listened to the ANC, I was struck by a recurring pattern. Every time they spoke about an element of the collapse of South Africa, what they euphemistically call challenges, they pretend to not know that the ANC is the root cause of all of these crises. In the ANC's world, the causes of load shedding, corruption and state capture are as puzzling as some of the world's great mysteries, like Stonehenge or how those dollars ended up in the president's couch. There's just one problem. In each of these cases, the DA told them so. Back when former President Mbeki was still merrily chewing his garlic and the Guptas were but a twinkle in Zuma's eye, the DA warned that we would run out of electricity. When it later emerged that the ANC planned to use load shedding as an opportunity to loot through Chancellor House, the DA warned that this corruption would lead to cost inflation and substandard work, as well as serious shortages of electricity. All of this has come to pass. And then the Honorable Lucas has the gall to stand here and say that load shedding is not the end of the world. Load shedding is the end of the world for thousands of workers who have been laid off because of it. Load shedding is the end of the world for small business owners who have lost everything. The only people for whom load shedding is not the end of the world are ANC fat cats who live in taxpayer-funded mansions with generators paid by the same people who are suffering under load shedding. But then again, we do remember how the Honorable Lucas spent over 50,000 rand on KFC during her first 10 weeks as Northern Cape Premier. At the time, she responded by, and I quote, how would we have eaten without taxpayer money? I suggest the ANC should make this their slogan for the 2024 election. Clearly, honorable, for Honorable Lucas, load shedding will be the end of the world when it eventually shuts down her local source of streetwise feasts. When that happens, just remember one thing, the DA told you so. Then there's state capture. For decades, the DA warned that ANC cadre deployment would lead to an explosion in corruption and an implosion in service delivery. So the ANC should not be shocked by yesterday's constitutional court judgment that they must hand over their cadre deployment records to the DA dating back to January 2013 when President Ramaphosa became king of the cadres. It was good to hear the Honorable Mantashe say that the ANC will abide by the court's order. I do have some empty boxes at the back and is welcome to start dropping off some of his cadre secrets on the way out of this room and out of government. But Minister Mantashe then went on to posture that the ANC will continue with cadre deployment even after it caused state capture and collapsed service delivery. There's just one problem with that, honorable members. The DA is currently awaiting judgment in a separate court case to declare cadre deployment unconstitutional and unlawful, whether the president likes it or not. When that happens, just remember one thing. The DA told you so. Sometimes one must also observe what is not said. What stood out today, like a cadre's sore thumb that got caught in a cash register, is that the ANC was too afraid to let Deputy President Paul Mashatile speak. He's sitting right here, so why was he not allowed to speak today? I'll tell you why, because the ANC is too afraid to put its corruption-accused Deputy President on this stage. Imagine, just imagine, a president that protects his deputy from corruption allegations, but is too scared to even allow him to open his mouth. The DA told you so. Now, there's one final thing that the DA warned the ANC about, but they didn't listen properly. I'm sure we've all seen the reports that Jacob Zuma's new MK party is already polling at 24% in KwaZulu-Natal and at 9% nationally. It is clear that Zuma took millions of ANC votes with him when he poached the MK logo from right under the ANC's noses. 
As far back as 2009, the DA warned them with our Stop Zuma election posters over one million times. We warned them on lampposts, on billboards, on TV and on radio, but they did not listen properly. Now those chickens that grew up at the Nkandla Coop have come home to roost at Lutuli House. The biggest irony is that this is all a crisis of President Ramaphosa's own making. Instead of upholding the rule of law, the president freed over 15,000 criminals as an excuse to keep Zuma out of prison. He kept feeding the crocodile, hoping that it would eventually stop being hungry. But now, the crocodile is coming for ANC votes, and it's hungrier than ever. Mr. President, in just a few months from now, as the crocodile locks his jaws around you, I want you to keep one thing in mind. The DA told you so. Honorable Hadebe.